Now, embroidery on fluffy towels. Well, you might think that's a kind of a scary embroidery project, but it's actually not too bad for especially a confident beginner. It's a good project to dive in. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about embroidery on fluffy towels, even a knockdown stitch on I in IQ Designer. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned. And because I always like to have a fun project to practice on, we're going to take a yeah, maybe a towel that's seen better days and either make it into a pet bed or maybe a picnic pillow or picnic sit upon. <laughs> we have a lot to cover today. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk and you won't want to throw in the towel after this. The giveaway for today's video is a great pack of embroidery thread. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. And check back in a couple days to see if you can claim your prize when you are the winner. Let's talk about embroidery on big fluffy towels. There's a few things to think about, and that's what I think makes this kind of a fun project for maybe a confident beginner in embroidery. Because there's a couple things you need to take care of and it gives you a chance to explore and see all the different ways that you can do embroidery on your machine. So there's some things to take into consideration. We're going to talk about supplies here. Talk about the stabilizer that goes on the back of the towel. You'll need a topper for the top of the towel. We talk about thread and we're going to talk about something a little bit special called the knockdown stitch which controls the nap of the towel. So I like to do when I'm learning something, I know I like to do a fun project that, uh, that means I'm doing something kind of useful, but I'm learning at the same time. But um, maybe it's something that I don't, it's not the gift for the queen, right? So I've come up with a project that I think it might be fun for you today. It's taking a towel that might have seen better days. I think we all have them, right? They may have gathered up along that woven band on the bottom. The edges might have gotten a little rough because towels get a lot of use, right? So you can take a towel like that and we're going to do some embroidery on it and either turn it into a cool pet bed because a pet bed you're going to have to wash a lot, right? Right? You know that if you're a pet owner. Or this would be a great pillow to take to use as a sit upon at an outdoor concert, a picnic, all kinds of different things because it's super easy to wash. So that's what we're going to do today. Now let's talk about getting some embroidery on our towel and getting it hooped up. First of all, terry cloth, big fluffy terry cloth, you would think it was the world's sturdiest fabric, right? Well, what happens with terry cloth, the way it's made, it's really a loosely woven textile. Why? Well, because these little loops that you see, there's fab uh, fabric has like warp, warp and weft, right? So these little loops are part of the weft that gets pulled up to create the loops. And if they're cut, they're called pile. So it's kind of, if you can get down really microscopically, or just really close, you could see that this is really a loosely woven textile. So we need to treat it that way, even though it's fluffy. So on the back, I'm going to recommend a cutaway stabilizer. And I like to use either uh, what's called a no-show mesh. It's very lightweight. It's available in white, black. I think sometimes a, like a peachy color as well. Uh, here's the black version now. You could use a, uh, a different kind of cutaway stabilizer. Now I've seen some people recommend a uh, sticky because uh, you'll see when we, ho we hoop it, it's, it needs to float over the top of the hoop. But I've have found when I've used like a sticky stabilizer, it's great to hold the project in the hoop. But when you're taking the project off, sometimes it can pull some of those terry cloth loops or pile away. So I kind of don't like it. But you can also use what's called an Aquaset stabilizer, which means when you moisten it, it gets, it gets sticky. You put the towel on the top of that, and when you re-moisten it, it loses its sticky and you can easily pull the towel away. It's also great for velvets. So either one of those is fine. Today I'm just going to be using no-show mesh, which is a very uh, common stabilizer to get. This is Floriani no-show mesh, so that's the one I'm going to be using using underneath my towel. Now, towel has towels have a uh, pile, right? They stick up. What happens if you're doing your embroidery design on the top of this pile, if you don't mash that 
if as my mother-in-law would say, if you don't mash it down, <laughs> that the embroidery is going to get lost in that pile. So you need some sort of a topper over the top of it to hold those to hold those piles down so that the embroidery can can float over the top of it and so that you can see it. So there's lots of different things. This is a wash away topper, which means that it's going to go away with water and it's clear so you can see through it. You can also use a heat away, which is removed by heat. Um, you could also use like a mylar film. And there's also something called a color keep topper, which is kind of like a plastic. So say you're embroidering a white snowman on a dark blue towel. What's going to happen is not only do you need a topper to keep those piles controlled, but some of that dark blue is going to show through. So a color keep topper, you'd use a white one and your white snow man is going to look super white and crisp on the top of your dark blue towel. Now this is starting to sound like a lot, right? Well, I have a handout for every one of my videos and if you look in the description it's usually highlighted in blue and it goes through all these different things that I'm saying. So if you don't catch something, if you don't want to take notes, no worries. I've written it all down for you and that's something you can keep for future reference. Because you may not be doing a towel today, but you might be doing a towel next week. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about hooping our towel because we've talked about the stabilizer on the bottom we've talked about the topper on the top and we're going to need to get our towel in the in the hoop it's big and fluffy so let's pull out a traditional hoop here's my traditional hoop and this outer ring can this outer ring can be loosened so I can loosen up my ring using this screw right down here and I can open up that outer ring to accommodate the bulk of the towel great right well towels are so fluffy sometimes it's really challenging to get that outer ring as big as you need it to be to hold the towel you can kind of get it in there <laughs> by doing some sort of a twister dance but it doesn't want to hold it really, really well. So what I like to do is I like to float my towel on the top. So what you do is you take your, this is like no-show mesh. I've hooped it very securely. I've tightened up the screw. So this no-show mesh is very secure in the hoop. Then what you're going to do is, is lay your towel on the top. Now I also like to use a little bit of spray stabilizer on the top. And what that does is holds the towel kind of in the middle because it's big and fluffy and it wants to scoot. But then you can see I've left this embroidery after I finished it. What I did is I did that spray stabilizer. I put pins all around the outside edge. Now be careful you don't want to put a pin where your machine is going to embroider right so they're on the very outside edge and for that reason I don't want a, a design that's going to go all the way to the outside and that's going to hold it in now I'm going to be using the Altair today and it also has a base feature which is awesome for extra securing this heavy towel in the hoop and it holds down that topper and this is that clear topper I told you about when you get done with your embroidery, this clear topper just pulls away, and this is a water-soluble one. So when I get this towel moist or if I wash it, this is all going to go away. Now, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is thread. Now, these towels are probably going to get washed a lot, right? And normally I don't really, it doesn't really matter what thread I use because if I use a rayon or if I use a polyester, it's okay. But what you need to know is a rayon thread is created from wood pulp. It can be bleached out. So, in a polyester thread made from dead dinosaurs, bleach isn't going to hurt it, right? It's plastic. So, if you're going to use it, do embroidery on a towel that's going to be washed over and over and over and over again, try to stick with a polyester thread. This is a decorative towel. I don't care. It's not going to be washed that much and I'm probably not going to be bleaching it. So, just keep that in mind. Now let's talk, let's get this uh, project going. So uh, we're going to talk about doing this knockdown stitch when we get to the machine a little bit later. We'll put this aside. I'm going to talk about doing that. And here's our fun little project for the day. Now this is a towel 
and it has it had seen better days. Uh, it's a but it's in great shape, right? It's just the edges were getting nasty. This was gathering up. It's lost its color compared to the other towels and must have got thrown into a bleach load. So perfect for making this little project today. It has a woven band. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to do another one for you today on the video. I'm going to do a little embroidery. Great to practice your embroidery on a small little project. Um, so I did my embroidery. Now what I'm going to do is to create the pillow. It's a super easy project. All the directions are in your handout. I'm going to cut across the bottom of the band and this part right here that I cut off is going to be sewn on the side. Now I'm going to move it over so we can maybe see that this part right here is that bottom band and it's going to be sewn around and then you'll see the completed pillow at the very end. I'm going to put a zipper in the bottom. I have a, vi I have a video and a handout on, on working with zippers, but this is a super simple zipper to put in. That video is called a zippy guide to zippers. And so we're going to put a zipper on the bottom so we can easily take this, pil this, this pillow cover on and off. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail, but I thought you might want to see an overview. Now, I am going to hoop my other towel that I have ready. So we're going to get this aside. We're going to finish this a little bit later. Here's the traditional hoop and here's my towel. Now when I hoop it, I'm going to hoop this towel and put this design just a little bit above the center of, the, of this band. Remember the zipper is going to go here. Got it? Okay, so now I'm going to put it, I'm going to take my spray adhesive, spray it. Sometimes I like to do something protective to keep the hoop nice and clean, right? So we'll do a spray on that. Take our towel, I've made a center mark, and I want the bulk of the towel over here so that's not in the harp of the machine. I'm going to lay this on the spray adhesive, kind of put it down, fold it over, and I've kind of found the center of my towel. Then I can take some pins and I can pin it right along that outside edge. Just be kind of careful that you know that they're going to be not in the field of embroidery. That has it pretty secure. When I get this on the machine, I'll put the topper on, cut a nice generous piece of topper, lay that on the top. I could even pin that down if I wanted to, do a basting stitch, and then away I go. But there's another hoop that you can use. Not everybody has it, but you can get it. And it's pretty simple to use. And especially for towels, it works great. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna show you the magnetic hoop. Here's the magnetic hoop that's available. It's an optional accessory for the Altair. And for all, all machines that I know of now, I don't, don't think it comes with any machine. And it has these like little cardboard pieces to hold the magnets up. They're powerful magnets, so it's going to hold a, a towel, right? So I'm going to put my stabilizer on there. Pretty simple. We're going to have to fold it in half again. Let's find that center. Here we go. Get these out of the way so I can get them. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to lay it on the hoop. The center mark is going to be right here. I can see the center mark right there. And there's one on this side as well. I'm going to lay that down. Finding my center marks. Flatten it out. So far, so good. I'm going to make sure it's straight with that little guy. And now, all I really need to do is use my little clamps. Hold on. And... They find their happy place right away. This is a little bit easier than traditional hooping and a little bit easier than using those pins. Once again, it's an optional accessory, but it really holds it well. Now, what I really like about this is I can take my topper, lay it on the top, and then replace one magnet at a time to hold it on there. <laughs> Pretty sweet, right? So, this is an optional accessory. This is what I'm going to be using today. But remember, you can always use your handout to follow instructions to getting that into your traditional hoop that probably came with your machine and put it around the edge. So now, we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to bring up an embroidery for my little pet bed that I'm going to be making. We're going to do a pet bed for a very good dog. 
and I want to show you, because I'm using the Altair, we can use uh, IQ Designer to create that knockdown stitch. Knockdown stitch is sometimes available if you have like embroidery software, but we can use the IQ Designer to do something that software, usually you can only do it in software before, but now we can do it in the machine. So we're going to head over to the Altair, we're going to embroider a bed for a very good dog, and then sew it on up. <laughs> See you over at the machine. So here we are at the Altair, and uh, here's the one I did before. This is one we're going to sew up a little bit later, and I did the cat. That's what happens when you have the two-year-old named the family pet becomes the cat. But at any rate, in the background I have this knockdown stitch, and what it is is in software I can create that. But if you may not have software and you do have IQ Designer, this is a stipple design, and we're going to do that in just a second, that's going to knock down those fibers. Now, there's ways to do it, and that's in your handout, and we'll talk about that when we, when we create it. But first we need our lettering for our pet bed that we're going to be making for our very good boy. So I've brought up the letters. This is the built-in lettering in uh, the Altair. I brought in Very Good Boy. Now we're on the embroidery edit screen where I can put a bunch of different stuff together. But in the embroidery edit screen on the Altair, if you bring up the different editing features, now these letters are grouped because that's the way they come in. I can ungroup them if I want to, but I want them to be grouped for this next part. This flower down in the lower right hand corner, what that does is that's going to take the outline of Very Good Boy. So when I touch it, it's going to automatically outline those different letters. Now here's the thing, it really is good at outlining right next to that embroidery, but I can change the distance and make it more like a patch because I want an area all around the whole lettering to be have that stipple, that knockdown stitch. So by touching the plus, you can see that's going to actually join up together and create like an outline around that outside edge. Now that is like a half an inch out from the whole thing. That's perfect for what I want to do. So by hitting the distance, it's going to take that outline and it's actually going to simplify it. And that's what I really, really want. So by touching memory, what's going to happen, it's going to tell me it's going to send that to the IQ Designer recall list, stamp patterns list, right? We're going to go find that in a second. So, okay, it's going to wait for me there till I'm ready for it. Now, I'm going to do this knockdown stitch as my very first part of my embroidery. So I need to bring it in first. So I need to create it and bring it in. So I'm going to take very good boy and I'm going to put it into the memory of the machine because I'm going to bring it up later. Got it? Okay, now let's go off to IQ Designer. which is your land of creativity and for doing stuff that you used to have to do in software. So this is the shapes, also called the stamps. And do you see that flower? There's that very same flower. So when I touch that flower, there is very good boy. In fact, there's where I did, home is where the beach is, and that's where I did the cat. Cool. So now I'm going to touch this and that's going to bring that outline up onto the IQ Designer workspace, the exact size that I need. And it's as simple as this. I'm going to choose from the region properties, I'm going to choose a stipple. I'm going to let it be in red so I can see it. When I touch OK, I'm going to touch the bucket and the center of that area that's going to be perfect for very good boy. That's all I have to do there. When I go next, I am going to tell it I want the smallest stipple possible. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to say I want the smallest spacing that it can go. I can change the length of the stitch if I want. Yeah, I can do it a little bit. And I can tell it that I don't want to have it to be inside that area because I've already made the area big, right? So I'm going to take that down to zero. Pretty simple. I'm going to hit set. Now, when I hit preview, the machine's going to show me the embroidery that it created from my artwork, which was that outline. Preview, OK. And as quick as you can say, boom, there it is. Now, this is a nice little stipple. It's not as 
dense as I need it to be to do that knockdown stitch, but we're going to fix that in just a second. So when I hit set, that sends that off to the land of embroidery. There it is. Now I want this to be a little bit more dense. Do I have to do it again? Heck no, because the Altair has a duplicate. There it is. I want to take it. I want to put it in the middle. It's just right on top of itself, right? But now I'm just going to scoot it up, boom, boom, a couple little ticks, right? Now, if I want to see that up close, I can show you that that is just a little bit more dense. Could I make it more dense? Of course. Okay, let's duplicate that again. Now let's take it up to the center and let's move it the other way just a little bit. Okay, now what have I done? I've really created a very loose stitch that's going to hold down that night in those nap fibers. Now, if I wanted this to be a little bit more intense, I could just do a few more of them. I'm happy with that. So let's get ready to stitch that out. Okay, there it is. Now I really need my very good boy. So I'm going to go add memory of the machine. There's my very good boy set and there it is ready to go. Now I'm going to stitch that very first knockdown stitch that I created with a stipple. I am going to do it over the topper that I've already used. But one thing I wanted to share with you is when you're this, the back of this embroidery is not going to be seen, right? Because it's going to be in my pet bed. But maybe your towel is going to be something that you're going to see the back of, right? Well, what you can do is instead of using a traditional machine embroidery thread, which is really just in black or white, you can get a very thin thread. This is Silter, Quilter Select 80 weight Paracotton Poly. It's like a polyester that kind of feels like a cotton, but it's a very thin thread and you can get it in multiple, multiple colors. So if this was going to be a towel that I wanted to see the back of, I could have wound a bobbin and used this as my embroidery bobbin thread and it would be, it wouldn't necessarily look like the front, of course, but if you look on the back, it wouldn't be a stark white or on a dark towel, a black would work. But you could sort of match your towel on the back with a, with a color that kind of looks like the color of the towel. So if they see the back, it kind of makes it a good presentation. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm ready to do, I've threaded up my machine with that, with the color that I'm gonna use for the, 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 um, <laughs> the knockdown. And once again, I'm going to use that thin thread because it just needs to hold stuff down. I don't want it to show out. I just want it to kind of, kind of blendish in the background. So I'm using that same thin thread. There's lots of uses for it. So I've threaded everything up. I'm going to go to embroidery. This is going to take me, oh, just a few minutes to get this done. So when I get this embroidered, when we come back, then I want to show you how I put this pet bed, uh, put this pet bed together and we'll have a fun project that doesn't take too long and you get to practice your embroidery on towels. So I'm going to embroider very good boy and I'll see you right back. So I finished my very good boy. And then there is that, um, there is that background. Now I did it in a different color. You probably would want to match the towel if you don't want it to show out. So it mashes it down pretty good. And then here's the one I did earlier and I took away, uh, this is my big presentation towel, remember? And so this has that uh, IQ Designer mash down, knock down stitch in the background. And so uh, you can see it turned out pretty cool. Now I used a light blue on here because so, I wanted to, you know, a kind of a fun effect. I could have just as easily matched this color of the towel and you would see the design coming out. What I want to point out to you is, and I hope you can see it, see these little lines down here? These little dark skinny little lines. Now, if you see those, that would not show out 
if I didn't have that knockdown stitch. Even with a topper, that little skinny line would have gotten buried into the nap of the of the towel. So you can do more designs if you do that knockdown stitch because you can do uh, designs that have like a more of a, uh, a skinny little part of it, delicate little parts of the design. Okay, enough of that. So let's sew together our pillow uh, cover, okay? And I'm going to do this really, really fast, but I want to show you basically just the overall view in your handout step-by-step -step instructions. So I just sewed the zipper to the part where I took away the... Um, along that band, right? So I just sewed the zipper on either side, sewed it together, super, super simple, not a fancy, fancy, fancy. And then on the one side, what you do is you take that band and it's just sewn around. Now I've created a tube. It's just sewn around like that. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And then this will be finished. Now, when you sew it together, unzip your zipper because you're going to want to turn it right side out when you're done. Okay, so now I've switched the Altair over. And I put the digital dual feet on because it's going to help me control the bulky, fluffy fabric, right? And so one thing I also like about the Altair is you can do little sewing projects with the embroidery unit on. So I left the embroidery unit on. I would take it off if I'm doing a lot of sewing. But when I go to sewing, what it's literally going to do is take this arm and push it off to the side. So I have enough room to do what I need to do. And so that way, if you want to do a quick sewing project in the middle of embroidery, you don't have to take your arm off and, and, and store it and all that kind of fun stuff. I have the digital dual feed on, just a straight stitch. I am going to increase my stitch length just a tiny little bit, but are you ready now? I'm going to sew this really, really fast. You don't have to sew this really, really fast when you're at home. You can take your time, but I'm going to go pretty fast. Are you ready? Let's go. pretty fast, wasn't it? Well, you don't have to sew that fast when you get home. But all I did was sew this side gusset piece to the circular part of the towel. Now let's see what our towel cover looks like. I'm going to open the zipper, turn it right side out. Now this is big enough for sitting on pretty big puppy can sit on this or several cats. Now how do I stuff it? Well, what I do is either you could take an old blanket to put it in, say you're going to the picnic or whatever, but you can also take a pillow, put it inside of a kitchen trash bag, close up the kitchen trash bag. This is going to protect the pillow from getting moist. Stuff your pillow inside your pillow cover. Now, if you do this for your puppy, you may never get the puppy off of it because I know when I do this for the cat, you can't get the cat off of his cat bed. There we go. Zip it on up. That's pretty cush. <laughs> it's a pretty fun, quick project. So we use the Baby Lock Altair to do a fancy, fancy pet bed fun pillow. We learned how to do some embroidery on towels because you can really gussy up a plain towel. Makes a great gift. And I guarantee you, you're never going to get your pet off this pet bed. <laughs> Thank you for showing, uh, for sticking with me today. We had fun on the Altair, did a little bit of an IQ designer, and a lot of fun with towels. I'm going to shoot it off to George. Thanks for joining me. Hope you had a great time. Go out and go to a concert or something like that. You got a pillow now. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. 
Don't forget, you can click on a, the link and download Kathy's lesson guide on today's presentation. But I want to take a couple moments to share with you my favorite features on the Baby Lock Altair. I believe the Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine on the market. There are machines that sell for thousands of dollars more that do not offer the same features. You know, the embroidery features are incredible. The nine and a half inch by 14 inch embroidery area, you can really uh, expand your horizon with embroidery and there's 494 built-in designs. You also have that 10.1 inch color screen that gives you all kinds of editing capability from color to sizing to also you can actually take designs and do automatic stippling around it. It has 30 built-in fonts and five jumbo monograms. Now with the fonts, you have all kinds of editing capability. You can even take and put in a, a name or a saying and then do an applique border and turn it into applique automatically. It also has the IQ Designer. Now, this is an app that you use your smart device like a phone uh, or an iPad, and you can send an image, a graphic image to the machine and it will turn it into embroidery instantly. The embroidery is amazing, but what about the sewing and quilting? This machine has 11.25 inches of space and five inches of height, so you can fit even the largest quilts into this machine. It also has automatic fabric sensors that will sense the thickness of the fabric so it will set the right pressure and with the automatic tension it gives you perfect fabric control from heavy denim to very sheer fabric to working with elastic or even a t-shirt collar. This machine truly controls the fabric with perfection but also it has the digital dual feed and that what that does is that is a belt driven uh, uh, walking foot system that's controlled by the motor of the machine and you can control even like here with this minky perfectly so you have so many amazing features with this machine but what about an amazing deal and we're offering free shipping across the united states but wait that's not all for a limited time, and while we have it in stock, we are offering a special bonus with your Altair purchase. So first, we're gonna give this beautiful set of 63 spools of a polyester embroidery thread. This, the beautiful shine and quality of this thread is quite amazing. Also, I'm including uh, the Baby Lock Ultimate Stabilizer Bundle. This has the, uh, the most popular rolls of stabilizer from wash away to cut away in different colors and this will enhance your embroidery to give you a better quality. I'm also including the Baby Lock Altair Inspirational Guide. Now the instructions on this machine is wonderful but what's different about the ins Inspirational Guide it is written by Baby Lock educators assuming you know nothing about the machine so it takes you through every aspect giving you a uh, Full color, it's, it's over 300 pages of full color description, step-by-step -step description. And if you complete this uh, inspirational guide, you truly know everything on this machine. We're including that. Plus, we're gonna include a online membership to Baby Lock's Love of Knowledge. This has hundreds of videos that give you step-by-step -step details on how to use the machine and also do techniques. This is invaluable and you get a membership to this as well. You also get our famous rose gold scissors. Uh, this, these scissors are wonderful, both the shears and the embroidery shears. But last and not least, we put together a very exclusive design bundle by Anita Good Design. It has 17 different collections and it comes with over uh, 400 design files and it's truly amazing the variety you get with this. So all this which equals over a $1,600 value is free with your Altair purchase for a limited time. Now we will run out of these supplies so this is while supplies last. So click on the link to order or you can call us at 1-800-865-9664. You can email me at more so 
at AOL.com. But don't wait, this deal will surely end. But if you have any questions, again, call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,